Hello and welcome to Fuerteventura. It's a little bit overcast, but we are going to make the most of today. I have never been to Fuerteventura before, so I'm really looking forward to it. I have been before, but never to this part of the island, so it's going to be new for both of us. This morning then, we decided to have another buffet breakfast, mainly because we'd missed the main dining room once again. Yeah, so main dining room breakfast finishes at 9.30 and we probably got up about 9 o'clock. So we headed straight up to the buffet. Good selection as always up there with plenty of fresh fruit, cereals, toast, fried foods. Everything that you could possibly want for breakfast is available. Our only criticism is it's a bit cramped and a bit small up there. And I still can't find any hash browns, so that is my criticism. But everything else was really good, really had a good breakfast in there. And there is teas, coffees, water and fruit juices available in the morning as well. We got a lovely seat just by the window and I just had a bit of toast and some hard boiled eggs actually. Yeah, I had again my own little breakfast that I made up mostly bacon, a bit of toast, beans, a sausage. Nothing too exciting, but it's what I've been having most days while I've been on board. After breakfast, we went and grabbed ourselves a flat white premium coffee from the pizzeria, which was lovely. We've started to notice that the ship is showing signs of her age. There are a few things that are broken with signs basically saying that central maintenance is being carried out. One of the main bars in the pool area was closed with a limited bar service available, hot water fountain in the buffet completely out of order, lifts being out of order as well for maintenance. So she's definitely starting to show her age. There was also an issue yesterday with the water being turned off to most of the cabins on deck 12 for again essential maintenance. So those people were without any water or toilet facilities for nearly six hours really. To be fair though, the crew are always working on them. They're working hard. Nothing seems to be left. You can see people are always working on them. So the crew are excellent. I think it's just the age of the ship. After we had our coffees and a wander around the ship, we then headed off the ship and into port. Fuerteventura, Porto de la Rosario is a really small port. I think it's one of the smallest we've been to in the Canaries. They handed us a map when we disembarked Azura and we just basically followed the direction of the map. It's sort of guiding us in the loop direction around the town. The first place that we got to was the beach. So there's a lovely beach there. So if you do want to spend the day on the beach in Fuerteventura, it's a short walk along the promenade and it's a lovely white sand beach that's there and there's quite a few families enjoying the beach so it is our popular option. You could then carry on along that promenade area where you come to the main theatre really for the town and then you can head inland from there and into the main city centre. So we continued to then follow this little map that told us to walk it towards the city centre and we came across a really big shopping centre and it was quite sort of well hidden. I wasn't expecting it to be over three floors and with a huge array of shops that were in there either. It was uh, quite impressive really. The shopping centre is quite large and it is pretty new by the looks of it so there's lots of modern shops in there even UK brands are in there so it's a good place if you did want to do shopping in port to head there. After having a little walk around this huge shopping centre we made our way into the centre of town so the old centre and we came across this beautiful little white church. It was fantastic again as we like to do on most of our ports we either visit a church or museums anything that's free really. <laughs> As we do in most ports, we like to visit either a church or a museum of something of interest. And this was quite a small church, but it was definitely very nice right in the centre of town. It's located in a square and just off that square was the main town hall, which again looked really, really impressive. Also, there were a number of stalls set up selling crafts and locally produced goods. From there we followed the street which has a slight decline down again towards the main waterfront to the port. So we got to the end of this main little shopping street and it took us straight back to the port. All in all I think we were off the ship about hour and a half, two hours. Yeah. It's not the biggest port we've ever been to with the most attractions and things to do and see but 
we know for next time. Also in port with us was Aida Nova once again, so she's been with us a few times during this cruise. Obviously she's much bigger, sister ship to Arvia and Iona, so there was probably about 7,000 passengers coming off the two ships today, so the port was quite busy. Once we'd completed our full loop, guided by our free map that was handed to us when we disembarked, we decided to make our way back on to Azura. The process to get back on the ship was once again absolutely amazing with very limited queuing and again we were on within a couple of minutes which is absolutely fantastic. It was and this is actually the first port where we've been able to get a picture of the front of the ship even though this time there was still a massive crane in the way. One crane at the front and one crane at the back actually. It's still not a clear photo but it's our best opportunity we've had so far. Once we were back on board, we were a little bit hungry and luckily for us, they were still serving lunch in the Peninsula restaurant. We joined the virtual queue and pretty much as soon as we joined it, we were called and told that our table was available. Really, really quick service. For lunch today, then I started off with some chicken noodle soup, really tasty, and I absolutely enjoyed that once again. The pe there were nice little pieces of chicken in there that were very tasty. I opted to have the ham croquettas and they were absolutely beautiful. I could have eaten many, many more of them. <laughs> I then stuck with the chicken theme and had roast chicken as my main and that chicken was beautiful, really well cooked, probably one of the best lunches I've had on board. So if you get an option to pick the chicken, I would definitely go for that. It's quite useful to know that the roast chicken that Tom picked was on the Tashir menu. However, if it's just one of you, they will sort of portion it down to size for one person. So don't be embarrassed to order the to share. Yeah, option. my portion was definitely not a to share portion, was it? But if it had, I would have been disappointed. <laughs> and for my main i opted to have the cheese and onion tart with homemade tomato ketchup and it was really really nice really enjoyed it and then dessert i had upside down cake and it was okay i ate the bit that had like the sauce on the top and left the rest of it because it was quite dry and i opted to have the black forest gatto and it was beautiful incredibly moist very tasty and so well presented. They'd sort of drawn a cherry on the plate, which did look absolutely fantastic. I think that was probably the best presented dessert we've had between us. After lunch, we headed out on deck for a few hours to relax, didn't we? And take part in some of those deck activities. When we first arrived in Fuerteventura, the weather wasn't that great and it was a little bit overcast, but fortunately by lunchtime the weather had cleared up and we thought we'd make the most of it by going up and sitting up on deck. So we sat between the two main pool areas up on the tiered section on the top tier where we could actually see over into the coral pool and hear the entertainment going on, but we couldn't hear the sea screen that was on the opposite side. Good thing being that we could hear the entertainment in the coral pool because luckily for us there was a Disney quiz about to start. Tom being the Disney expert I had high hopes however I was soon to be incredibly disappointed. <laughs> do you know what we didn't do too bad did we? Well not as well as other people though. But we had a go and we really enjoyed the Disney quiz. We managed to get 15 out of 20 correct which was pretty good however there was a group on who got full marks. Full marks. So well done to them. They've won a sticker. We've never won a PO sticker. I know. So we haven't been able to exchange for everything, so we can't tell you what the prizes are. If you participate in any onboard quizzes or activities and you win, they give you stickers that you then put in a little sticker book, and then at the end of your cruise, you can cash in your book of stickers for a variety of different P&O prizes. Yes, so if you have won a prize, let us know. Please let us know because we don't know what the prizes are because we've never won one. So yeah, that would be interesting to find out. After the quiz then we headed down to Breakers Bar because it was time for a sail away party. So we do love a sail away party and to be fair on P&O, the sail away parties, this is our second one here on Azura and they've both been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. The good thing about this sail away party is that it is on top deck, everybody tends to get involved, you feel like you can 
part of the sail away because you can see the ship sailing away. Whereas on Arvia, when there's a sail away party, it happens in the sky dome, so you can't really see what's happening outside. But here, you really did feel like you could see the sail away as it was happening. Yeah. And it was really good. The team were brilliant. They got us doing dances, joining into the usual thing. The song that everybody loves that they plan every cruise ship we've ever been on. Sweet Caroline, if you haven't heard it on a cruise ship, where have you been? <laughs> Apparently it's the captain's favourite, so everybody must stop the captain when they see him and ask him how much he loves Sweet Caroline, apparently. Yeah, I'll be thrilled. And then there was a couple of special guests that arrived. First of all, Sean the Sheep came up, and then we had a quick appearance from Wallace and Gromit. I don't know what happened to Wallace and Gromit. They turned up at the side of the pool and then I think they were inundated with children and they kind of disappeared off to the side. So they, were, they didn't make it very far onto the pool deck. It was a really, really good sail away. Both thoroughly enjoyed ourselves, didn't we? Yes, and it was perfectly timed because as they came to the last song of the sail away, the wind picked up as we were heading out of the port and it would have been too cold and too windy for it to continue if they hadn't timed it perfectly. So it worked out really well. By that time, we'd had a couple of drinks at Sail Away Party, so we headed back to our cabin to have a little rest. Not for very long though, because we needed to head straight to the restaurant for dinner. When we got back to the cabin, we uh, were just having a look through the horizon, planning our evening, which events and entertainments we were gonna take part in. And we noticed that they'd actually increased the price of the Wi-Fi packages. It's not something that we use on board. Well, we haven't used it this cruise, no. have we? But if you're wanting to use Wi-Fi on board, please bear in mind that it has gone up in price. We then joined the virtual queue and headed down to the Meridian for dinner and this evening, we were given a really, really nice table where we could watch a sail past the top end of Fuerteventura. They gave us a really rubbish table to start off with right by the service station and it was really in the way. We would have been knocked and all sorts. So we did ask to move once we got in there and that's when they gave us a beautiful window seat which a couple who were sat next to us had asked if they could sit in there and they were told no, so they weren't very happy with us. I'm very happy, sorry to that couple, but we enjoyed it, <laughs> so sorry. Yeah, it was beautiful because we timed it perfectly. We, we sailed in between Fioraventura and Lanzarote. You could beautiful. see all the lights twinkling. It was really nice to be able to sit there. For dinner itself, we started off by ordering, well, I ordered a Caesar salad and when it arrived, I was a bit surprised because it had anchovies in it. Now, bearing in mind, it doesn't state on the menu that Caesar salad comes with anchovies. Yes, yeah. so I swiftly removed that because I don't like it and ate the rest of the salad. It also had bits of bacon in there as well. If you're thinking that's a vegetarian option, check with your server before you order it. However, I did have the vegetarian option because I had vegetable spring rolls and they were absolutely delicious. For main meal tonight, we both opted for the same. We had the vegetable corn lasagna and it was really tasty and it came with some extra, extra, extra garlicky garlic bread. And I was able to taste that garlic for the rest of the night. So sorry for the, those who I was chatting to. <laughs> yeah, maybe me. But no, I had it as well. <laughs> and it was absolutely beautiful. Thoroughly enjoyed it. For dessert, I had the cherry cheesecake. Well, I didn't have it for long because Dom spotted it and then he took it away from me. <laughs> no, I offered it to him because he prefers something cherry and I quite like the look of what Dom had. So we did a swap. I ordered the coffee and hazelnut cake and it, again, it was presented beautifully. However, I don't think it was on my top list of desserts that I've ever eaten. It was okay. So no teas and coffees after dinner today. So we just headed straight to the theatre because it was time for tonight's dual show. En route to the theatre though, we did stop off at the glass house and just pick up a couple of glasses of red wine because they do allow you to bring your own drinks into the theatre. So tonight's show in the theatre, there was two halves to the performance. The first half was Sammy Lomax, who was doing her own show tonight, whereas previously we'd seen her as Pure Paloma. 
and she thought she was fantastic. She did a lot of her own versions of songs, didn't she, that were a bit more bluesy, a bit more R&B. She's a fantastic singer. We really enjoyed her performance. The main theatre, once again, was really, really busy. Pretty much the vast majority of performances in the uh, theatre have been absolutely jam-packed. If you are intending on going to any of the performances on board, it's highly advisable that you pre-book. The second part of tonight's double performance was by the group Graffiti Classics. Now they were supposed to perform a few nights ago and we were expecting two shows during the duration of this cruise. However, they had a little bit of a problem with uh, the delivery of their musical equipment. Yeah, so some of their instruments were lost in transit, so they haven't arrived on the ship, so they had to put something new together. They were entertaining. The majority of the audience absolutely loved them. It was a mix between classical music and very old-fashioned type slapstick comedy. Basically, the more silly it could be, the better really for them. But majority of the people in the audience absolutely loved it, so... They obviously were doing something well and to put that show together, to be fair to them, that's not their normal show, couldn't have been easy. So it was definitely, definitely worth watching, but just wasn't our favourite show of the week. In order to put on a performance like that as quickly and without sort of the vast majority of the instruments they usually use during their performances, they did an absolutely wonderful job, really. Yeah. So we headed straight from the theatre to the Manhattan bar. We didn't stop anywhere else tonight because we knew we wanted to get some seats there early because tonight it was the late night comedy show with Jack Ryan. He was scheduled to start his show at 11.30 and we pretty much arrived in the Manhattan bar at 9.45, so nearly two hours early. For good reason, it was absolutely jam-packed standing room only. So if you, if you were planning on coming after that second theatre show, you would have no chance of finding a seat. So it's definitely a tip if you want to watch the late night comedy. And this is on all p and ships because it's happened to us on our view as well. You need to get there early if you want to watch the late night comedy because it is one of the most popular shows on the ship. While we were waiting for Jack Ryan's performance, the house band Pulse were playing a range of 70s classics and they are incredibly talented. We really enjoy Pulse actually. The more the cruise has gone on and we've had more chance to hear them, that they do sing such a range of songs but they are really really good. We were also joined by the Sisters of the Seas again. Yeah, can't get rid of them. <laughs> Only joking, yeah. I'll put the link to their brand new YouTube channel just at the bottom there. Yeah, and if you can subscribe to their YouTube channel, which they have just started while they're on this cruise, I'm sure they would appreciate a subscription from you for that. After a couple of drinks, it was time for Jack Ryan to start his performance. And when we say it was an adult comedy show, it really was an adult comedy show. It was definitely not suitable for children. And sit in the front of that audience at your peril because nobody was safe. He was that scary, we didn't record any content for Jack Ryan's performance uh, no. because he told us off last time and we didn't want to risk it again. We definitely didn't want to risk being spotted. But he was absolutely fantastic. I think the best performance he's done on this ship this you, week. You could tell when he was freer with what he wanted to say. He was a lot more it, relaxed. It was a lot more relaxing and the jokes came a lot easier when you don't have to overthink them I suppose and be careful what you're saying. During his performance the second theatre performance kicked out and there were so many people stood watching his show. It was a really really busy funny evening. Really really good. Jack Ryan performed for about half an hour and finished just after 12. So in the Manhattan all four of us were drinking Cosmos. I'd never had one before and I really enjoyed them. <laughs> Quite nice. Considering it's one of my favourite cocktails oh. and I have them all the time. I think I've had one before, but it was so strong I couldn't drink it. I do like cocktails, I do like shorts and spirits, but if a drink is too strong, I can't drink it. Actually, a Cosmo, fun fact everybody, a Cosmo was the first drink I ever ordered on a cruise ship. And that was on MSC Virtuosa. It was in the, what was the lounge called at the top on Virtuosa? Sky Bar. And the Sky Bar or Sky Lounge on Virtuosa. That was the first drink. 
So all four of us then made our way up to the Midnight Buffet. And again, really, really good selection. I had plenty of crackers and cheese, as well as the bratwurst that I, I really seem to be enjoying. I also had a lovely selection of food from the buffet and grabbed myself a hot chocolate once again. So that was great. You had a hot chocolate as well. And then it was uh, back to the cabin. And what we did notice was everybody started to put their cases out. We're not disembarking tomorrow, but a lot of people end their cruise tomorrow. So there is a weird feeling going on that the cruise is ending but it's not for us for another day. There's a very strange feeling on board because obviously some people are disembarking and getting their flights back home tomorrow and others like ourselves have got an extra day. It'll be interesting when all these new passengers arrive tomorrow and whether or not that changes the sort of dynamics of, uh, of the cruise. Mm. So that's it, join us in our next vlog where we will be in Tenerife. So pretty much that's the end of our day in Fuerteventura. If you've got any comments or questions, just pop them in the box below and we'll get back to you. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more content available on our YouTube channel, so press that subscribe button. If you're interested in receiving daily updates, we're available on most social media platforms. Just search for Tom and Dom Travel.